By the end of 12th century AD, we find that the Turkish armies have made deep incursions into northern India. And one of the commanders of the Gurid Sultanate, whose name was Bakhtiar Khilji, we find that he had entered deep into the Bihar region as well. Here, he had went on to destroy the university towns of Nalanda, Vikramshila and Udantapuri. But unlike Vikramshila and Nalanda, we see that the university town of Udantapuri has now become a base for Bakhtiar Khilji. The town of Udantapuri is the modern Bihar Sharif, which is close to Patna. And we find that according to the Persian sources that Bakhtiar Khilji had made a fort there. Now the main aim of this fort was to act as a forward base for Bakhtiar Khilji when he will advance further east into the Bengal region. His main targets in these future raids was the Sena kingdom. And in order to start raiding the Sena kingdom, he needed the permission of the commander of the Gurid Sultanate who was entrusted to look after the Indian domain of Muhammad Gauri. The commander who looked after the Indian domain of Muhammad Gauri was Qutubuddin Aibak. We are talking about the start of 1200 AD. Muhammad Gauri was still the Sultan of this whole Gurid Empire and Qutubuddin Aibak was his military commander. So we find that Bakhtiar Khilji travels to Badayu where Qutubuddin Aibak was present. This meeting of Qutubuddin Aibak and Bakhtiar Khilji happened in Badayu in around 1203 AD. And we find that the main aim for Bakhtiar Khilji was to ask for more military resources in order to to execute an effective campaign against the Sena kingdom. But these demands of Bakhtiar Khilji were refused by Qutubuddin Aibak. The main reason behind this was that the Indian territories of Muhammad Gauri were still not firmly under the control of Qutubuddin Aibak. He still needed a large manpower to suppress the various revolts that were going on throughout the Indian dominions of the Sultanate. Although Bakhtiar Bakhtiar Khilji didn't get his military resources which he wanted but what he did get was the permission to start invading the Sena country. Now coming to the Senas, during this period the Sena kingdom was ruled by Lakshman Sen and according to the Persian sources particularly Tabakate Nasari, here Lakshman Sen is called Rai Lakhmania. And according to Tabakate Nasri, we are told that this king was ruling this kingdom for 80 years during this period. Now, in Tabakate Nasri, we find that there is another story concerning the Sena kingdom of Lakshman Sen. Some Brahmins had made predictions that the rule of Lakshman Sen would soon come to an end. Hearing this, Lakshman Sen inquired more about this production. So the Brahmins told Lakshman Sen that the Sena kingdom will be destroyed by a man who would have extremely long hands. His arms will be so long that while standing, his arms will touch the calves of his legs. So to search for this man, Lakshman Sen sent spies in different directions. And we are told that after some time, someone told him that the description of this man, which is provided by these Brahmans, is similar to that of Bakhtiar Khilji. Now we are told that this news that Bakhtiar Khilji is the same man who would destroy the Sena kingdom soon spread to different part of the Sena kingdom. And we are told that because of this news, the city of Nadia, which was the capital of the Sena empire, started to become less populated. The Brahmanas and other important people started migrating east towards Kamrup and East Bengal. Now we can be pretty sure of the fact that Bakhtiar Khilji didn't have arms that reached his calves. So one thing is clear, then this story is certainly not true. But I think this story points to two important facts. So the first fact is that the Senas were aware of Bakhtiar Khilji and the threat he posed. 
Second, the migration which is portrayed in this story is also true. Because it makes sense because the Sena kingdom and the people who were living at the border between the Bihar region and the Sena kingdom were quite aware of the devastation which Bhaktiar Khilji had brought with him. So it is quite natural that the people who were living at the borders between the Bihar region and the Sena kingdom started migrating eastward towards East Bengal and Kamrup. Kamrup is Assam. And we can also assume that some people in the city of Nadia itself also migrated towards the east. This is natural because they were quite aware of the fact that the city of Nadia will going to be the next target of Bhaktiar Khilji. But we find that Lakshman Sen did not migrate. He chose to stay in Nadia. Now the same text Tabakate Nasri tells us that Bhaktiar Khilji with 18 horsemen entered into the city of Nadia disguised as horse dealers. Now these 18 men with Bhaktiar Khilji were the advance unit of the main army that numbered around 10,000. We are told in Tabakate Nasri that these 18 horsemen with Bhaktiar Khilji went on to the palace of the Raja and then they started massacring the palace guard. And soon they were on the room in which Lakshman Sen was eating his meal. And we are told that Lakshman Sen, in order to save his life, escaped through a boat to the city of Vikrampur. Now these two stories, the first is the story of the prediction of the Brahmanas and Bhaktiar Khilji having long arms. And this story where we are told that Bhaktiar Khilji entered the city of Nadia with 18 men does not make any sense. Because how can Bhaktiar Khilji can enter the city of Nadia with 18 men when Lakshman Sen knew that his kingdom was in danger? Now suppose we believe that Tabakate Nasari when it is telling us that Bhaktiar Khilji entered the city of Nadia with 18 men is true. If this is true, then it would mean that the security in the city of Nadia was not that great. There was a huge security lapse. Now, this is quite shocking because the Senas were definitely aware of the fact that Bhaktiar Khilji's nest target was going to be their kingdom. He was earlier ravaging the region of Bihar. So it is quite natural to assume that the next target of Bhaktiar Khilji's raid was going to be the Sena kingdom itself. So why did we see that there was such a security lapse in the Sena capital itself? One thing that can explain this security lapse is the fact that the Senas were expecting a regular battle. They were expecting that Bhaktiar Khilji would attack their kingdom with a large army that can easily be identified. But that didn't happen. Bhaktiar Khilji attacked with a small contingent on the Sena capital itself. So this lightning raid of Bhaktiar Khilji in the Sena capital itself was the main reason why we see that Bhaktiar Khilji was able to achieve this quick victory. But another factor behind Bhaktiar Khilji's success in this region was the heavy cavalry of the Turkish armies. Bhaktiar Khilji was also aware of the fact that how important this heavy cavalry was for his army. And that is why we see that when the conquest of Bengal was complete, he issued a coin. Now when we see this coin, we can clearly see that in this coin, a Turkish cavalryman is depicted charging with full gallop and he is holding a mace in his hand. This shows how important heavy cavalry was for the Turkish armies. This was their symbol of power. Now coming to the capital of the Senas itself, we find that after the conquest of Nadia, Bhaktiar Khilji didn't occupy Nadia for long. The main reason behind this has to do with the geography of this city. We find Nadia is situated in Lower Bengal. Now Lower Bengal is quite far away from the base of Bhaktiar Khilji, which during this period was the town of Udantapuri. So that is why we see that Bhaktiar Khilji moved away from the Lower Bengal and instead he occupied the second capital of the Senas, whose name was Lakshmanavati, which became Laknauti. Now the reason why Bhaktiar Khilji chose Laknauti 
to become the center of his operation in Bengal was the fact that Lakshmanavati or Lakhnauti was quite close to his base which was the town of Udantapuri. So with the establishment of uh, the Muslim power in the city of Lakhnauti, now the base shifts from Udantapuri to Lakhnauti. And in order to show that now Bhaktiar Khilji had control over the Bengal region, Bhaktiar Khilji issued these coins which I had showed you earlier. Now another important fact about this coin is that in this coin Gaud Vijay is written and it is written not in Arabic but in Sanskrit. After establishing his base in the city of Lakhnauti, what we see is that Bhaktiar Khilji didn't made any attempt to conquer the lower Bengal region and the eastern Bengal region. The main reason was that the kind of military resource that was needed to govern these region and to effectively control these region was definitely not there for Bhaktiar Khilji. So that is why he did not conquer the lower Bengal region. About the Senas, we see that now the Senas ruled the eastern Bengal region with Vikrampur as their capital. Vikrampur is close to the city of present day Dhaka. And we find that when Lakshman Sen died, his son Madhav Sen became the next Sena ruler. Now, another interesting fact about the Senas is that we see that after this conquest of Bhaktiar Khilji, what we find is that the Senas didn't made any significant attempt to reconquer the territories which were lost to Bhaktiar Khilji. And we find that the last Sena ruler during this time was Susen. And after him, the Sena empire came to an end. Now, if you want to know about how Bhaktiar Khilji raided the territories in the Bihar region, you can watch this video. Thank you for watching.